what's going on guys and welcome back to another video and today we are going to be delving into one of the most understudied and fascinating reptiles and this is the crotalus tigris or the tiger rattlesnake this rattlesnake may not be as popular as the mojave rattlesnake and the western diamondback but its unique morphology and its potent venom makes it a key subject for herpetological study. So the Crotalus tigris is a part of the family Viperidae in the subfamily Crotalinae. It was first described by Edward Drinker Cope in 1890, and phylogenetically it falls within the Crotalus intermediate group, although some analyses suggest it occupies a more basal position relative to other U.S. Crotalus species. And as of right now, there are no recognized subspecies for the tiger rattlesnake. However, some regional variation in color has been noted, especially in individuals in southern Arizona compared to Sonora, Mexico. Adults typically measure between two and three feet in total length, with some rare individuals exceeding three and a half feet long. The head is small and usually narrow relative to the body, especially compared to other northern American crotalus species. This small, Cranial size is supported by a short and narrow rostrum, which appears disproportionate to the heavily muscled neck and body. Scalation includes 21 to 27 dorsal scale rows at mid-body, and typically about 160 to 180 ventral scales. The tail is relatively short, with 15 to 25 subcaudal scales, and ends in a keratinous rattle typical of the genus. Coloration ranges from pale gray, or bluish, to orange, tan, or pinkish, depending on locality and substrate, offering excellent camouflage in arid, rocky terrain. The Crotalus tigris is a habitat specialist with a restricted distribution. It's primarily found in southern Arizona, particularly in the Tucson and Phoenix uplands, and extends to the northwestern Sonora, Mexico. The species inhabits rocky, xeric hillsides, bajadas, and desert canyons typically at elevations between 1,000 and 4,600 feet. It prefers areas with volcanic or granitic substrate and is especially associated with slopes supporting sparse vegetation such as creosote bush, the Lararia tridentata, the ocotillo, the Fulcaria splendens, and the saguaro cactus, the Carnegia gigantea. Telemetry suggests that it's largely sedentary with a relatively small home range, usually under 0.05 square miles. Tiger rattlesnakes are primarily nocturnal during the hot summer months, although they can be active during the day in spring and fall. They are ambush predators that rely on camouflage and chemical cues to locate prey, and the diet consists of small mammals and lizards, and juveniles appear to favor lizards, particularly whiptails and side blotch lizards while adults incorporate a higher proportion of rodents such as kangaroo rats and pack rats. Unlike some rattlesnake species, they rely heavily on ambush predation. Tiger rattlesnakes will actively hunt and have been observed exhibiting active foraging behavior during cooler nighttime hours. They are also known for their unusually high sight fidelity, often returning to the same retreat sites year after year. The Crotalus tigris has one of the more potent venoms for all the rattlesnake species, despite its small size. Some of the LD50 values for this animal comes to be around 0.06 to 0.2 milligrams to kilograms subcutaneously, and this is comparable to the Crotalus sculatus, the Mojave rattlesnake. The venom is neurotoxic, containing Mojave-type presynaptic photolipase A2 neurotoxins, such as Mojave toxin homologs. However, it is also significant metalloproteinases and hemorrhagins make it a mixed type venom. Interestingly, the tiger rattlesnake's venom exhibits less inter-individual variation than many other rattlesnakes, suggesting a more stable ecological niche with consistent prey demands. This may relate to the snake's limited geographic range and dietary specialization. Despite its potency, envenomation in humans is extremely rare owing to the species' reclusive behavior in remote habitat. When bites do occur, they can result in systemic neurotoxic effects, including muscle weakness, ptosis, and respiratory difficulty, alongside localized pain and swelling. Tiger rattlesnakes are another ovoviviparous species, 
meaning that these snakes do not lay eggs like a lot of other snakes do. These actually gestate their eggs internally for a period of a couple of months, and then they hatch internally as well, and then they come out all as live little babies. Mating occurs in late spring and early fall, typically from April to June, and females exhibit biennial or triennial reproductive cycles, with gestation lasting approximately four to five months. Parturition occurs in late summer or early fall, usually between August and September, and litter sizes are relatively small, ranging from two to eight neonates with an average of four to five. Neonates measure around 10 to 12 inches at birth and possess fully developed venom glands and functional fangs. And they're independent with days of birth and begin feeding within two weeks and primarily feed on small lizards. The IUCN currently lists tiger rattlesnake is as a species of least concern, but its restricted range in a highly specialized habitat makes it a subject of environmental concern if we start to encroach upon their habitat. This species is protected in Arizona and should not be killed or threatened. And herpetologists are currently advocating for more protections for the species. Given that this snake has such narrow ecological parameters and is also important for the venom research for future studies as well. The Crotalus tigris is a perfect example of how specialization and evolutionary adaptation can converge in a small but powerful package. From its potent venom to its rugged desert habitat, the tiger rattlesnake offers us a glimpse into the incredible diversity of the North American pit vipers. If you're studying herpetology or venom evolution, this is a species you should absolutely keep on your radar. So, thanks for watching guys and I appreciate you staying on us with this journey learning about all the different rattlesnakes we have here in North America. And soon we're going to start branching out to some other species as well. So, tell me what you guys think of these videos and some future videos that you want to see as well. I'll see you on the next one.